Well, we're seeing the beginnings of climate breakdown. Long predicted, though not predicted to happen quite so soon. London Fire Brigade say that firefighters are currently dealing with significant fires across London. It seems that Earth systems are beginning to spiral into that um, desperate state uh, towards a tipping point that um, many climate scientists have been talking about for a long time. And as they approach that tipping point, um, we see greater and greater extremes of weather and extreme responses from the living planet to that weather. The, the heat waves, which you know, we've suffered for two days in this country, but many other people around the world are suffering for weeks at a time, and they are killing more and more people every year. So for a long time, the billionaire press has been trying to suggest that we've been exaggerating the threat. But if anything, it seems scientific predictions are slightly behind the curve on where we are now on in terms of a whole series of really dire events. The huge heat dome over North America last year. California to Colorado, there is little relief in the forecast. Um, the massive floods in Europe last year. For some, it's a desperate wait to find out whether their loved ones made it. Um, the devastating heat wave in India um, this year. It is unbearably hot in India right now. A brutal heat wave is scorching the region, evident in images like these. Um, and now these heat events in Europe. It's the biggest problem of all, and no industry has done so much harm. The billionaire press has granted the social license to fossil fuel companies, to animal farming, to other forms of destructive industry, which has enabled those industries to continue, has protected the legacy investments, has protected the vested interests. Um, and without that massive propaganda barrage by the billionaire press, um, downplaying, denying, ignoring, sidelining um, the biggest issue ever confronted by humanity, these existential crises of the collapse of Earth systems. Without those propaganda efforts, we would have got on top of this. Well, primarily it's about power. Um, you know, people say, well, you know, maybe, you know, Rupert Murdoch has got investments in this and that, and I'm sure he has, but that's not his primary driver. It, it's about ensuring that his world, the world that he wants, the world that he partly created, is the world that we stick with. And there's no um, going back on that. He and others like him doubtless regard as a personal affront because it's, it's like a pushing back, a rolling back of their power in order for other people to have a say. We make the mistake often of mistaking interests for preferences. Oh, the Tories like this kind of politics when in fact the Tories are being paid to pursue a kind of to uh, politics and, and mistaking um, power for interests. Mogul Murdoch and his son James appearing before a parliamentary inquiry and the closure of their prized News of the World tabloid. It's not all about the money. It's not all about what shareholdings they've got. A lot of it is simply about raw dominance and power. They, and they alone, must be the dominant force in society. And anyone who challenges that is the enemy. The first thing to recognize is that uh, this is a leadership contest being played out in front of the Conservative Party membership. It, they're not at this stage trying to appeal to the country as a whole. And that membership is overwhelmingly composed of comfortable, generally older people, almost exclusively white people, large um, uh, proportion of them are men, high, higher than the average. Um, this um, is, is a very particular demographic they're targeting, and it's a demographic which does not want change, sees any um, uh, green um, initiatives as, as being just one step away from communism, um, and so they're appealing to the worst instincts of the nation. Sending ventilators to help the people of India and the following day, the following day, Mr. Speaker, uh, the Labour front bench said that any prime minister in my position would have done exactly the same thing. Um, the worst instincts of the most reactionary and regressive people in, in this country. But above and beyond that, they're appealing to their donors. And, um, and, and there's this thing I call the pollution paradox, which is that the 
um, companies with the greatest um, interest in investing in politics are those which are most likely to be regulated out of existence if democracy has its say. In other words, the dirtiest and most damaging and most antisocial companies. And so it's their money which comes to dominate politics. The dirtiest money is what dominates politics. And so any politician promoting the interests of dirty money gets loads of money. Elections are basically won and lost on, on, on their funding. Um, it's a campaign financing which counts above all else. And so by taking an, an anti-environmental stance, you appeal to that dirty industry, which has got loads and loads of money to spend on ensuring that it's not regulated, that it's not taxed, that it's not closed down. Well, there's a great failing in our education system that we, we've never taught about complex systems and how they operate. And complex systems don't respond to stress in linear ways. Things don't get a little bit worse this year, a little bit worse the next year. They reach a tipping point and they collapse. And um, there's loads of evidence now <clears throat> that Earth systems are approaching tipping points. And if they collapse, they bring each other down, they go down like dominoes, and the planet effectively becomes uninhabitable for the great majority of its people. And already we saw with just two days of extreme heat in the UK this week, utter chaos. Doubtless we're going to see in the stats people dying of heat stress. Um, but you know, we ain't seen nothing yet. That's two days. You know, it's not going to be very long before we see weeks and weeks of that on end. And even in a country with a supposedly temperate climate, that's going to be absolutely devastating. And still that doesn't capture it because that's just the prelude to the tipping, which makes ensures that no food, no water, none of the things we need to sustain our lives. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we can turn this round, I believe, because there are social tipping points as well as environmental tipping points. And if enough people become involved and mobilise quickly enough, we can force a great social tipping of the kind that's happened in politics many times before with other issues. But, you know, we, we can't leave it to our lords and masters to sort this out for us. It's not going to happen. We must mobilise in unprecedented numbers. Just before you go, Byline TV started about two years ago to have the conversations that we aren't seeing elsewhere in the mainstream press and to investigate the stories that the established media don't want to touch. Now, we're a small but dedicated team. You know, we do it all on a shoestring, but we really do love bringing you the content that we do, whether that's our live shows, it's our short form documentaries, or going behind the scenes with our Q and A's and learning more from our producers about how you actually run a TV channel. So if you do like what we do, it's a really easy to support our work. Please just head over to byline.tv forward slash join hit the join button, become a member, and join us here in the Byline TV community. We can change the media, it's in our hands.